What's happening, people? Welcome back to the Brothers Geek Out podcast. We're back with another episode to give you an update on what's been happening in the pop culture world. Uh, we've been watching a few things. We'll give some reviews on what we've watched. Umbrella Academy, Season 4, Twister. Um, Supercell Season 2 is back. Um, Acolytes has been cancelled. So we've got a few things we want to talk about today. Um, but on that note, I'm joined with Kibbs. How you doing, bro? 2014 Sorry. Tough Mudder. I remember that one. It was a good one. <laughs> I know, I know. It was, it was, it was a funny one. Uh, all good, bro. Uh, just doing the everyday stuff, trying to get by. Uh, finished a piece of artwork, which I'm really happy with. It came out sick, bro. Came out so good. And like, so it's something that I want to introduce so that we get to, uh, so it's, it's my business. So I'm going to start selling custom-made jackets to people. Uh, more info to come, but check out Kibla Ahmed up. Uh, Instagram. I've just posted the final version, but I'll do the full process. Can you show, as well, can you show us that in here? Can you show me uh, that? Hold on, hold on. Let me bring it. Why not, man? Why not? People who's watching, if you're not watching, check out the Instagram Instagram pages and stuff. Keep up and up. And if you are watching, quickly just check this out. Maybe you got it on a different tab or whatnot, but check this piece of artwork out. Um, and do follow Kibler's journey to see how it's drawn. There we go, Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh, it's blurred out. Uh, there you go there you go yes that sounds like that that sounds like uh that's a what's her name that's nia's favorite word at the moment let me take the blur off hold on what what favorite word she she says there you go isn't it that's her word ah that's cute there you go man effing go so it's uh for for viewers who ain't watching do check out the instagram page so you can see it but basically it's that iconic i would say iconic now from the X-Men um, 97 cartoon where Gambit was riding Wolverine. But in this version, <laughs> it's Deadpool riding Wolverine, uh, yeah. which is pretty cool. And how are you drawing that? How are you pasting it on a jacket? So like, what is it you're drawing that with? So, hold up, man, the room's a mess. Uh, I'll blow the background, man. When Alara grows up, Ola should be like, man, my messy room. Uh, so... You know, recently I got to go watch Alien Romulus and we were invited to the UK gala screening. So shout out to 20th Century Fox and Disney for that invite. And then I thought, you know what? I've got this jacket. It's been, you know, like we're going through clothes, bro. And like there's stuff I don't wear no more, bro. And it's like, how can I recycle this and use my talents on it? So I, the first painting drawing I did was of an alien with its mouth out and everything. And it was perfect to, to walk the red carpet with. People were excited and I was hoping to catch uh, Fede Alvarez's uh, attention if he saw it because he was doing an interview at the time, but it was too late by then anyway. Had to go in, grab our seats. But what, you know, I just, it's an old denim jacket and I've just used, like I bought some uh, fabric markers, ink markers from Amazon. And I, this is the first time I'm drawing on denim. So it's a whole different technique. So the aliens didn't come out exactly as bright as I wanted it because I didn't put an undercoat on it, which I should have done. And I think that's where it would have popped and people would have noticed it a lot more. But because it was quite shady and my sketchy style, it was only a certain amount of people got to see it anyway. But I, I really liked it. But then uh, that night I came home, still hyped uh, over, I was hyped over aliens, but I was just hyped on, oh, this is really cool. Like this is, something I'd like to introduce to the business that we run on the art channels and do customized jackets for people. But for myself as well, like when we do, how do I mix the art world with the premieres and things that we do? So when I got back that night, I was like, you know what? I've got this sick idea to do, like I wanted to do the Gambit and Wolverine because I love that image. It's such an iconic image. But then I was like, oh, let me just go with the hype and do the Deadpool Wolverine one and have Deadpool sitting on his back instead. Uh, so I'm using fabric markers, but what I do is now I put like a white layer down and, you know, I first drew it on the iPad just to try and get the idea and the scale of it and then penciled it onto there once I put a kind of undercoat on where I can, it's almost like a piece of paper, but it's so difficult, bro. Like, you know, some people are amazing with a paintbrush. So I've seen videos where people just use a paintbrush and like, it's loads of, it's practice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So then I was like, I'm going to have to do it my way because I know how to use markers and with that design it was like you know what it's quite striking so it was like I want to make it stand out I want to make sure the colors pop as well I want it to have the animation look still 
and so I did that and yeah man so it's something I want to move want to do moving forward I want to do custom jackets for people uh whether it's a t-shirt or a jacket I want to be able to do that uh so that, that that's 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 exciting I've done that the past couple I've been more creative now since knowing that I'm doing work for myself now so I can be creative and hopefully inshallah make some money from it as well and it pay the bills properly uh other than that uh Idris is coming around later he's staying over today so we've got Idris around oh that's cool little ones are growing quick bro so quick like a new year's new word is here you go there you go here you go that's uh, oh, I need to hear it man um, record it or let's talk to her later man I miss them yeah and uh as always guys sponsored by cherish clicks your magic mirror selfie booth so uh if you guys have got any events or anything like that coming up give cherish clicks a shout uh, i'll keep all the information in the description below it's a magic mirror so basically you pose in front of the mirror it takes a photo and it gives you instant prints or we can send it to an email or a phone uh, so we want to be doing loads of kids events which we, we just had a booking for a kids party it's in december but we've got you know the first proper booking uh, and you know we're getting into want to do corporate events as well so people that are doing office parties and things like that keep us in mind but they are we are proud proud sponsors of the brothers geek out podcast awesome cherish clicks guys check them out cherish clicks, yeah them. uh but yeah that's about it bro other than that uh with the free time, you know, you get to watch things in the background. I've got to watch quite a lot of things as well, but we'll go through it, man. Yeah. Cool, we'll man. Nice. Sorry. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I um yeah, no, I've been from my side, it's been cool. Like we're trying something out, guys. I don't know if you've noticed or you might notice that we're kind of doing this every two weeks now. Um, it gives us time to breathe in space and yeah, also set up set up clips in between, obviously, you get reactions, shorts, and all that sort of stuff. But we want to we wanna really spend more time giving our reviews and thoughts and stuff. Um, and so we've dedicated, like, let's do, you know, good two-hour podcast or whatnot, and then uh, uh, rather than trying to wash it into one, one hour or whatnot. So, yeah, no, in the last two weeks, it's been cool. Just been busy. Busy, just working, you know, trying to keep up with training. Dubai is still super hot, so I'm waiting for it to cool down. But... Other than that, it's been all right, man. I mean, we're looking to do some exploring tomorrow in Dubai, just drive out into the desert a little bit, which should be which should be nice. And hopefully the sky is clear. We can get a chance to see some stars. So we haven't utilized that really. I've got a four by four car. Not that I'm gonna go driving into the desert, but I could go a little bit off-road. And we got a sunroof that's um, you know, the whole the whole Pan ceiling, panoramic ones. Panoramic one, that's the one. Yeah. The whole ceiling is open can open. I mean you know, you can see through it. We're not going to open it because it's bloody hot. But, you know, I was like, let's just go there in the evening, just put the seats back and just look, gaze up in the stars. Um, Something simple as that. And it's going to be nice. So I'm really looking forward to it. Tomorrow I'm teaching um Mabs' kids uh, kickboxing. And well, Emma May, but kind of starting off with kickboxing. He wants me to teach his kids. So I figured okay. I'll teach him the basics, man. So, yeah, and that's going to that's gonna help me. And my teaching... I'm going to do, yeah? Mugendo, yeah. Um, yeah, teaching helps me kind of understand the technique a little bit. But I'm I've been thinking about with maps, you know, what for the kids, you gotta you gotta respect their uh, attention span and also you I, I can't go into details of technique because that's gonna be boring. So just kind of try and figure out how to be uh keep it short, sweet and fun. So gonna yeah, do yeah. that, which is which is uh awesome. But yeah, other than that, man, everything else. Good. Yeah, it should be good. It should, it's something that's what my passion is. It, not to teach martial arts. I mean, martial arts, I told Mabs, like, I'll teach them the basics, but if you really want them to advance, they've got to go to a class. But he's happy with me to at least get them in the basics, basics and at least let them understand a bit of the movements and stuff. Okay, um, cool. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And then, um, oh, oh, there she is, little Nia, little cutie, yeah. um, with a little ponytail. Nice. Oh, man, I can't wait to see her. Um, look at her. Let's hello, Sasa. Uh, oh, 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 face all over the camera. For those watching, I'm sorry that we you can't, cannot expose the baby's face on, on the no. internet. We're not in school. Go, go, go for it, man. Uh, but yeah, now other than that, what else has been going on in Dubai, man? Just um, nothing else, really. Nothing else, really. It's just been hot and stuff, man. No, it's just been hot. Um, trying to get into some of the I mean, kids are trying to work some things out out in Dubai with the Brothers Geek Out podcast. So always hustling on that front. 
Um, um, what else been going on? I got liver in, involved in my diet. I'm just, I don't know. I guess I'll get that get that start conversation about that. But live. I've I've always been deficient in iron, and I've always been taking iron pills and whatnot. But I figured I might as well eat little bits of liver. It's butter, okay. in my opinion. In my opinion, it's butter. I don't like the taste of it. But I buy like 700 grams and then I chop it up into little 100 piece grams and just eat a piece a day. Uh, not only am I getting the iron, I'm getting the protein and all the other minerals and stuff that comes with liver. Um, and, you know, with like, you know, for example, wolves or something, when they when, when a pack of wolves like get like strike down a, a prey, you know, the alpha male goes straight for the liver because that's the one that had the liver is what has all the nutrients and minerals, most of the nutrients and minerals in it. So it's such an important organ meat to eat. So I figured I'll get that involved in my diet, man, and just trying to just trying to keep healthy and whatnot, man. Just trying to keep the health good, trying to keep the body strong. Um okay. and whatnot. as I'm getting older, I can feel it, man. I'm just like up like you go jujitsu, you're rolling with these young big dudes, come out with your hip all busted and whatnot. <laughs> been tough but um yeah and i'll talk to yusuf <laughs> about it we've done a we've done a geek out podcast with yusuf that should come out within the week or two and we're talking about that he, he's getting into it he's young training five six times a week i was like i wish i could do that now man i can't do jiu that many times a week um just a recovery is tough for my body but do check that one out guys when it comes out we talk about the process his journey my experience and whatnot uh and we geek out about the martial arts which is always fun um yeah man that's it bro sam i feel like i have no updates because i've just been working it's super busy, man. no so, same bro it's just it's, it's i suppose it's hard to keep up with everything at the moment and uh no say hello just hello you don't have to go you don't have to show girl. your face man what's up idris he said what's up um i'm fine okay good come boy. on guys We're... good boy when we're in the middle of recording, guys. Sorry, I'm going to have to try and blur that out or just put something on their faces. But yeah, uh, I know it's been full on. Uh, but yeah, lots lots of changes coming. I keep on with the socials as well. I've realised like there are some, like I post on like threads and Twitter where we, we don't get nothing on there. And it's like, you know what, I'm going to change it up. So on Twitter and threads, I'll put down like our, our initial reviews for movies or any thoughts. And behind the scenes stuff, but I won't put no videos up on them because they don't get no interaction, and it's one less thing on me to do. The in I was wondering, I'd be interested to see what happens if we upload one of our movie reviews on Instagram and to see how much views and whatnot it gets and interactions. Like on YouTube, the podcast, like I say, is the long form content, and that's the one that gets the most views out of everything compared to mm. the short term. I'm, I'm surprised. The podcast is always like an hour and 20, 30 minutes long, and that's what gets most views, which is great, because that's what we're trying to push on the, on, the, on YouTube and whatnot. But the clips don't get as much. But, you know, like, let's just keep... I'll, I'll be interested to see what a long form clip, like a movie review or whatnot, gets sort of interaction on Instagram. But we've been getting some love, man. Listen, man, again, yeah, shout, yeah. Outs, shout outs to people, man. We've been getting some love on our content, the podcast, Fight Talk, some of the clips, the shorts, Instagram, YouTube, the whole lot, man. So thank you, everyone, man. I really appreciate all the love and um, you know, that we're getting on those on those channels. It's always amazing. It's always appreciated. And I always try to, especially with Fight Talk, I love it. We had some comments or whatnot. I love just interacting um yeah. with individuals and kind of geeking out about fights. We're gonna talk about uh you asked a question, you put a questionnaire out on in Instagram, so we're gonna answer that question. Uh, later on during the podcast as well, so that'll be a little clip for someone uh, who asked that question. So shout out to that person. Uh, sure. but... Yeah, so so that that's uh, Aaron, Aaron 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 J watches. So thanks for that, dude. So we will talk about it. You know what? I didn't even pick you know. So when when I... we get to it, we'll go from there. Yeah, I got it all up. Uh, but yeah, cool, man. So do you want to get into it? Should we get into it? Let's do this, bro. Let's, Let's do, do this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, guys, as usual, I didn't say this in the beginning, but as usual, check the description. The timestamp will be there, so you have the opportunity to skip this part uh, or skip to any part of the show, really. But as always, we do want to touch on real-world issues uh, because it is stuff that we talk about, that we think about. Um, and when I say it affects us, it affects us emotionally, it affects our humanity. So we do want to touch on it and speak on it. So it's our opinions, it's our thoughts. And it's based on our emotions and whatnot. But as always, 
free Palestine, free Sudan, free Congo, free Bangladesh, all of them. I mean, it's still, it's still what's going on in Palestine and Sudan and Congo is still going on. It's still horrible. Mm. Uh, it's again, it's 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 a shame that there's that it just doesn't come to a resolution. There's all these peace talks, not peace talks now, uh, ceasefire talks, but they've been talking ceasefire for the last 10 months. The UN and all them, like, the, the, the council, whatever, they've, they've you know, all signed off on a, on a ceasefire, but, it, you know, that those evil people, are, they just don't want that, right? The evil people in charge. Uh, I did see something this week that actually broke my heart a little bit, man, but I'm putting it out there, man. I saw Chris Evans signing rockets in Israel. And I'm just like, oh, that one But Chris Evans, man, Captain America himself. And it broke my heart. But I'm just like, broke my heart. One, you shouldn't be attached anyway. And two, it just goes to show that he is obviously doing his job as an actor. He's not Captain America. The real Captain America with his real values would see what's happening. We'll see that's a colonial empire that's trying to keep yeah. the indigenous people out of their land and steal it and do the right thing so Excuse me. obviously yeah. chris evans is an actor doing his thing i it did it did hurt but you know what like the way i see it is like there's 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 a couple of group of people there's one who knows those rockets are going to be used on innocent people and innocent children and they're evil motherfuckers right they exist mm. i'm not saying chris is one of them but i'm putting i'm putting him in one of these lump sums right two they have something on you. That's why you're forced to do yeah. it, right? Be it they, you, you don't want to lose your money and shit, or two, they have something on you. And Jake Shields, who's an ex-UFC fighter, and is a top, top class MMA fighter, was recently talking about it on a podcast. When he went to Israel back in the days, he was saying that they tried to entice him with women and underage girls. And he was like, what the fuck? And so he, they have these things on people. And you know what, Epstein, everyone knows about Epstein and his island and how many people he under the, and, and how many politicians and scientists he had under the thumb. And apparently mm. he was a Mossad agent as well. Uh, uh, you know, so um, that, that, you know, so they, uh, two, they have something on you which forces you to do it. Uh, three, you're ignorant to the news, you know, the mainstream media, which demonizes the Palestinian people, which is demonizes them and, doesn't really talk about the real, doesn't give you the real perspective. So you're just ignorant to that and you think that you're doing the right thing. But for you to sign a rocket that know, that you know is going to blow up innocent people, because you can't miss it now. It was kind of heartbreaking, but that's just the way it is. Like, like I said, you can't get too attached. But it was, I, I couldn't believe I saw Chris Evans. I was like, oh, shit, man, you motherfucker. Like, I'm sorry, man. I, like, I can't, like, I can't not put it out there, like, you're not cat, man. Fuck you. I don't give a fuck. Let listen. I'm gonna watch Captain America. What I am, I'm a hypocrite. I watch those things, and I'm trying to, you know, I, I pull it out there. Like I, I do still enjoy those, even though a lot of them should be boycotted and whatnot. But man, I, I, I you lose a little bit of in me, me personally. I'm not talking about people in general. I lose a little. No, bit No, no, definitely, definitely, you do, you do. Children I saw that clip dying. as well. Fifteen thousand yeah, children. children dead, and you're signing that shit. I'm sorry, I lose respect. They must have paid him, bro. He must have got paid. Paid or they got something on him. I'm I'm just saying that. <laughs> that's the way it that's why the way it all seems at the moment. They've either got like such a chokehold on you or or you're getting paid. Uh you know that clip you put up of uh Yusuf. Y Yakub, Yakub. Yeah. Because I follow his stuff. He's he's, awesome. he's wicked, bro. I like him, he's yeah. Awesome. Yakub. Uh and it, it's such a I think he was taking the piss out of Michael Rappentor. Rappaport, Rappaport. Rappaport. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was taking the piss out of Michael Rappaport there, which is, I mean, it's it's the way of the world, bro. Greed, people, the way they work, you know, like we, it's weird, bro, because like, out of everybody has their respect in how they put themselves out there. Like we have put ourselves out there. I suppose we see a great responsibility in putting ourselves out there and knowing what's right and what's wrong. And we're seeing stuff for ourselves. We're learning stuff for ourselves. That's why I keep saying it's more education than me trying to force feed something down your throat. You know? Uh, yeah, it's such, it's just, as Chris Evans, you lose, guy. That's you what lose, I can say. I'm sorry, man. I'm not trying, like, I don't know how else to put it, man, but you lose. You know, same with The Rock. He comes to my, you're not the people's champ. Muhammad Ali was the people's champ. He spoke up for the people. And you mm -hmm. want to, like, you lose, I lose respect. Children are dying. Innocent people. Listen, man, I say this all the time. If it was just Hamas dying and military people dying, I wouldn't give a fuck. We wouldn't even speak about it here. But the fact yeah. that children are being slaughtered 
right? Innocent people are being slaughtered. Women and men are being slaughtered. Palestinian prisoners, you know, getting raped and, right. and that... all this sort of stuff. It's fucked up. And then you 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 claim to be like people's champ. You claim and you don't speak out. Listen, quick shout out to Zendaya. Zendaya Ooh. actually reposted a charity thing, which which was for, for Gaza, and it generated millions and millions of, of charity and whatnot. So shout outs to her. And that's that I'm not saying that, oh, she, like amazing to her, but th this is the responsibility that they have. This is the power that these influencers have at the end of the day. You mm. do one repost from her and you're and you're able to generate millions for the innocent people in Gaza. So so there's been a few people out there like the the um, the weekend has always been donating and stuff like that. So you know Matt Mark Malone, Matt Malone mm. Yeah. You know, so but shout outs to her. That's the first thing I've seen from from her, I, I believe. And I'm not saying people need to again, people need to do whatever the hell they want. It's up to their conscience or whatnot. But if they if someone does do something, I'm going to say shout out. There was this recent thing about an award, uh, a journalist, uh, basically. Uh, oh, uh, Bissan. Yes. Yeah, so was, like there was 150 people, Zionists. They're Zionists, bro. Actresses, that, uh, actors and actresses. Yeah. 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 That said that she doesn't deserve it, but. It backed out anyway, that yes. she's still going to get her. But to be honest, she doesn't even want that. She just wants people to... She just the wants people to stop, man. She's been there for 10... Her home has been destroyed. Yeah. But she just wants people to know. She wants people to see the truth. Yeah, 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 exactly. But the thing is, bro, listen, people are seeing it, bro. People are seeing it. Oh, yeah. You know, when people talk to me about it, people, they know, bro. They know. We, we've, come, we've come too far not for people not to be educated and not seeing it. And when it's plastered, Oh Everyone. yeah, you they can't look, hide bro, it. They tried to stop it, bro. They tried to stop it. They, they stopped. still can't stop it. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say they cancelled. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, what's the comedian's name? And um, Basim Basim Yusuf. But Basim Yusuf. Twitter, yeah. But I think he posted something. I think he said he took his Twitter off because he was getting death threats to his family, and he said it got serious. Not just normal death threats. He got serious, so that's why he took himself off Twitter. For the safety of his family or whatnot, which is crazy. I mean, listen, man, the fact that they're giving out death threats, the fact that they, they they're rioting in Israel uh, and a group of listen, when I say Israel, remember there are people protesting against this. There are people protesting against and calling Netanyahu. I'm talking about Israelis in Israel calling Netanyahu mm. and his his uh, his team terrorists and shit like that. So the, you have mm. to. I'm not saying all of them, right? But there is that no, part of bro. people who are protesting for. The soldiers who rape Palestinians, like it's crazy minded out there, man. Those those people again, far right people. So I, I need people to understand that as well, man. That like, first of all, the innocent children in Israel are innocent. And if someone's got brainwashed, mm. it's not their fault, right? So again, we need to save them. Like we need to save the Jewish community from the Zionists because the Zionists again are using that Jewish uh community as as um and a scapegoat and using and yeah, yeah, yeah. steal their, their religion. And we need to save that. Because Basim Yusuf posted something about there was this woman back in the day, she was high level in Israeli something, and they said she was saying something about we use anti-Semitism as a weapon. That's why we use it. That's why they keep and say it. But remember, it's Zionist. Zionism, Zionism is, I don't give a shit, it's a racist colonial uh, um, mm. uh, uh, group. Right? They are nothing yeah, 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 to do with exactly. Jews and whatnot. So no, that's what don't. I'm saying. And then like the innocent people in Israel who are protesting against this war, who who there are generally ones that do want peace. There was one kid, remember, who who refused to to, to be involved and he went to the prison uh, in an in Israeli prison because he refused to join the army. And he was that's on right. Zateo doing an interview. So there are people like that in Israel. So we can't group up that's every nice. single one of them. But... They, well, those people, like I say, that, that are happy to do this and kill children, again, most evil people on the planet, you know, and again, seeing like Chris Evans, I'm putting his name out there again, like if he knows what's happening and he chose to sign that, then he falls in there. In, in my opinion, he falls in there as one of the most evil people on the planet. I don't give a shit, man. If you know it's a bomb's killing innocent children, you're evil. You're, you're, you're an evil person signing it with a smile and put a star on it, fuck you, man. Like, not just him, but all the other ones that did it. Fuck you, man. That's yeah, 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 disgusting. Yeah. That is disgusting. Um, As Mr. Delaney up. said, bro, if you six times. Yeah, straight up. Shouts to him and his book. Uh, Ryan Reynolds is a gem, man. Like, he's really promoting everyone in the movie. He's really giving every each individual a shine. And even with Paul Delaney, he... Uh, is it Paul Delaney? Sorry, yeah. Um, Peter Delaney, right? Yeah, yeah. No, but hold on, bro. 
promoting his no. book and everything. Shout outs to him. And, and dedicated the movie to his son. Beautiful. Is it? I didn't know that. That's beautiful. That's at man. the end in the credits, yeah. Oh, that's that's if you listen to that book, it's 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 heartbreaking, it's heart touching. But Peter Delaney, Delaney has just got such a sense of humor. No, I don't know, he just pulled it in a way, man. He expressed himself. Um, so yeah, Ryan Reynolds is a freaking gem, man. I love that dude, man. Um, what else, man? Yeah, so yeah, that's been tough, man. I know that there's this big scare about Iran and whatnot. Them guys want it, man. Yahoo wants it. The fact that Iran hasn't struck back, Rob Delaney, don't Rob Delaney. Rob, Rob Delaney, Delaney. Sorry, Rob Delaney. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Rob Delaney, not Peter. Sorry, Peter is his name in freaking his name. But <laughs> Rob Delaney. Um, <laughs> The fact that Iran hasn't gone out with a full-on strike, I mean, I'm telling you, man, it just goes to show who wants war and who doesn't. Who, who, who's like going out there bombing different countries and all this sort of stuff, and they're not attacking back because Iran's like, you will get it, but I'm not. We're not going to do anything to jeopardize mm. the ceasefire. I mean, like, what does that tell you, man? And also, like, the strikes that Israel do on the other countries, they're precise. They're precise, bro. They can hit a specific room to kill someone. But in Gaza, they don't know how to be precise. It's like, oh, we don't know how to be, uh, we're dropping a two-ton bomb and whatnot and just kill everyone. They've dropped more bombs on there, more than they did on Dresden and all that sort of stuff. Like, there's all these charts out. In Gaza, they don't know how to be precise. But in other countries, they could be picture-perfect precise. Like, again, if they were precise in Gaza and then pinpointed Hamas, Bro, again, nobody would give a fuck. Like, yes, there's still free Palestine and we care about that. But in regards to the innocents being killed, if they were just killing Hamas members and it was facts, we'll be like, well, fuck it. That, that, let, let them fight each other. But the fact they're killing innocents... No, exactly, exactly. So it's full on, bro, at the moment, man. It's, it's, it's like, there's no faith in government. There's no faith in power, like power of what people have. Like, I could just imagine one of them coming up to me and trying to explain himself to me and be like, listen you need to take two steps backwards because if you're going to try and explain to me murder, you're either going to get beaten up right now. So just walk away from me now. And as I said, bro, I've had plenty of conversations with, uh, I don't even know what I'm doing the common mark for because I think it's some made up shit. Anyway, these Zionist fools, uh, and I've called you fools, but in a polite way, I've never argued with you lot, but was just trying to understand your, your reasoning. And it's weird because they keep saying the Palestinian people and the kids are brainwashed. And I'm like, bloody hell, man. <laughs> <You're>, how? <laughs> Excuse me. They're, been, they're brainwashed. They're brainwashed. They are fake. And I think that's what the problem is, is that they don't have a place really and truly because they're all, all mixtures of everything. Yeah. But it's all an old school mentality as well like there was an incident that happened in the uk recently in regent park uh, where a, a couple went in and with their kids with palestinian flags only going to the regent's park cafe to get uh some ice cream and water for the kids because it was hot Bro, these old school fools started kicking off talking about like why are you come in here protesting and the rest of it and they weren't bro it was a big old fuss man and then you look at the de the demographics bro it's just old school old school people and it's like because we've got so many young Jewish brothers and sisters bro they're seeing this bro they don't want no part of this they don't want no part of this and bless them bro they have to live with that on them as well you know yeah, what I mean? the Jewish people have gone through so much in history and now these Zionists are doing this with their religion as well it's disgusting they've gone through so much and these Zionists are taking them through more and they're using it. These politicians and, and the, like I say, these Zionists are using their religion. They've gone through so much. But again, you know, like, again, we, you know, when we talk about freedom to Palestinians, we're talking about freedom to that whole region and all those people there, those innocent people there as well, the innocent Jewish brothers and sisters, the innocent Israelis who, who, who know they don't want none of this, who just want peace. Like freedom to all of those people to live in peace, man. Just got to get rid of those far right people. And, you know, even from that, like I say, with Hamas, I don't even give a shit about them either. Get rid of all of them. Mm. All of them. Fucking get rid of all of them. Put them all in prison and then let, let some peaceful people take over. But then unfortunately, the U again, they control the US. They control the US and they got the US just funding them. It's crazy, bro. The US give them billions. Then 
Israel through APAC gives out a hundred, couple of hundred millions to bribe politicians, and then they get go back and give them billions again. What kind of that's a crazy business scheme, man? And in in Israel, they get like free healthcare, education, all this sort of stuff. And in America, they're fucked. Like you got cities, like gang infested cities. You got people who've got no healthcare. You got homelessness all over the place. And the Americans are funding them to live perfectly. I'm like, what the fuck? This is why, again, when people were like, why do you keep talking about Israel? It's like, Bassam Yusuf said it great on, on that clip that was shared. It's because our tax money funds them, right? You have war criminals, they're war crim those war criminals coming over to your country to give speeches. You have your um, Western celebrities and politicians signing the bombs there to go kill innocent people. You, like, it's so, it's so crazy. Like, if... You know, we don't have, you know, the Sudan militants or whatnot coming to our, our countries and doing speeches and all this sort of stuff. We don't fund them, all that sort of stuff. And our mainstream news don't even talk about them. So really, we're finding out outside of the mainstream news. So don't ask why are we talking about them or why is it affecting us? We, we fund that shit. I pay taxes in the UK. My Some of my taxes go towards that shit. So you can't even talk about that. You know what I'm saying? So don't, uh, don't say why are we only talking about it. It's not that we don't only care about what's going on there but we care about it because we're literally involved but the whole world sees it i've been seeing loads of protests in japan and these zionists from israel are going there trying to say why are you protesting like, you're literally going to another land you're going to japan and you're telling them it's like can you not see the whole world is fucking against you you go to the other side of the world and they're saying free palestine what the fuck does that tell you and then for you to go to their land and tell them that they shouldn't be protesting like, get the fuck out of here, man. The whole world is against them. It's so crazy that they really nuts. think that they're the it's good nuts. guys when the whole world is against them. Horrible, man. They'll get what's coming. That's all we can wait for. I can't think of anything else happening right now. Even with <laughs> ceasefires, they're still bombing schools and shit at the moment now. Fucking hell. There's, we're still losing innocent lives, bro. Regardless, in so many places. Congo, Sudan. I mean, Yemen. It's... I did disgusting I did, time, bro. It's a disgusting yeah, time. But I did see something on breaking points, which they put a report out of Israel's economy. Now, there's like specialist reports from Israel coming out saying that if they carry on, they're they're fucking their selves up. They could lose Israel through internal because they vote over like 45,000 businesses closed down, estimated to be about 60,000. Like tourism is completely gone. Yemen, uh, the Houthis have blocked the Red Sea. Loads of countries have broken it. Shout outs to Colombia who stops uh, sending coal to Israel because they were like, you know what? You're using our coal for bombs. Fuck it. We're not sending you no more. Shout outs to South Africa who's, who's, who's still got the case against them and mm. other countries that uh, have joined in on that. So, bro, they, they, are, they are fucking themselves up. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, there's a report saying that they right? carry on, they will fuck this up. They've lost reputation. They've lost the PR war. Now they can't to continuously with this war. If they want to fuck around with Hamas, uh, Iran, and all that shit, like, they've already shown that we can get through your Iron Dome. So you're putting your people in more danger. Tourism's completely gone. Exactly. They're going to yeah. fuck themselves up. Like, they need to get that terrorist government out, man, to protect the innocent people in, in, in Israel. That's what I'm, I'm trying to talk about, to protect those people. Fucking hell, bro. They're, so there is a report that they could fuck themselves up out of all of this. And the biggest heroes are out there are the Palestinian people because they're like, we're not, you're going to kill us all. We're not leaving. We're not allowing you not to do what you did to us in 1947, 48, the Nakba. We're not, but those are the bravest, resilient people. They're like, cool. They're, they're fucked. But they're there and they got faith and they're just like, fuck it. And they're going through the hardest time ever right now. But they're the bravest people. They're the winners no matter what, man. So No, 100%, bro. 100%. Resilient, man. And it's like, I, I was doing a couple of videos and like behind the scenes, guys, on TikTok, like as much as we put our clips and our reactions on there, I talk about behind the scenes as well. I've been talking about it a lot on there. And like, it's a great community to talk to, bro. You're going to have your odd basic, basic guys, but... They're starting to lose. Keyboard warriors, anyway. I call them keyboard warriors. And as Mr. Delaney said a few six times, uh, I love it, man. He's, he's great. That was, he's that's great. one of my favorite quotes at the moment because it's, it's, it's real. But I've been talking about, like, so the incident with the Palestinian prisoner getting raped. I mean, he's going through a tough time already as it is. But now he's getting, now he's getting raped. Bro, so basically, they are trying to legalize rape as a deterrent, they said. Is that, that's what I'm reading, yeah? This is 
this and I can't be and the UK and the American government have still not jumped in to say, listen, this it's is not even on news, it's not even on the mainstream news, bro. I mean, I can't no, on, that's man. what I'm saying. Fucking bullshit. The democracy raped, of raped. The democracy in, in the Middle East. Are you serious? You're allowed to your what you want people to rape other people. You're happy for them to rape Palestinians, and you're that's saying you're democracy. Insane, the bro. most moral that is people. Insane. Get the fuck out of here. Insane, bro. Insane. So like that really it, it really pissed me off because I'm thinking because there was a protest after to get release the soldiers that did the raping. I'm like, rape is like one of the biggest criminal activities ever across the whole world, yeah. And this country, the state of Israel, is trying to make it like it's nothing. That's insane. How so like how do you feel protected by a government that wants rape to be just fine? Okay, yeah, to the Palestinian people, not, you know, that is dehumanization and some weird fucked up fetish shit. Insanely wrong, bro. And like, I, I, like I, I've got no thing about people and which way they go and the rest of it. I respect everybody. But that trying to be legalized is some next shit, bro. Disgusting. That's some next shit. I'm the, sorry. Well, that, like that really that is the, the democracy finger quotes of the Middle East. The most moral army on the world, finger quotes. Could you imagine, bro, getting arrested over there? Uh, bro, we we yeah. would listen, man. Like I said, the Palestinian people as as, as crazy if you if you want to pull it as faith, Allah knew those people are the most resilient people on the planet. They can handle it. Like when I say they can handle it. Doesn't mean that they should go through it. But what I'm saying is we wouldn't survive that shit with the mentalities that we got. Like, no, no, that's what I'm saying. Because even... I'm at the risk of getting raped now. Everything. Risk of rape, kill, everything. They'll do anything to you. Oh, that's horrible, to you. bro. It's horrible. It's horrible. And none of the US politicians, no, like let alone the media. None of the media are talking about it because they know they've all been paid off anyway. The media is all propaganda. It's a propaganda machine anyway. That's why my Instagram's full of like Al Jazeera and all the other other um like I say independent news um and again uh, breaking points Martin Lamont Hills a tale all those sort of ones so it's disgusting bro they've lost so much and the world is seeing it the world is seeing it from all social medias I know they're trying to block things and whatnot but Russia's getting that information China's getting that information all from all over the world are seeing it. and even though they the couldn't Western, stop it bro they couldn't yeah stop it. even though the Western media are trying to the West are trying to suppress it and whatnot. Bro, you're trying to suppress it in the West, cool. People are seeing it anyway. But the whole world is seeing it anyway. So you've lost so much. And you've, you you feel you're the most moral army. You keep saying it. And everything that Israel say that they are, they're the opposite. Literally everything, they are the opposite, right? Uh, the Israel army and whatnot. They have lost everything because it's all over the media. Zateo has done a great documentary that highlights all the war crimes. They basically put together all the war crimes and they went there and, and interviewed like some of these soldiers and whatnot, um, talking about it. It's all there, man. It's all online. You can't hide it. You cannot hide it anymore. It's all, all over the internet. Like they, they they have lost the PR. It's only because America's funding. American can stop it, but they won't. But it's only because they're funding it and they're backed up by them and all that. That's why they got the come. Otherwise, they would lose bad. They mm. would they would be it would be horrible for them. So it's disgusting, man. Horrible, man. My prayers go out to everybody, man. Uh, that story with the dad losing his kids, bro, oh. destroyed me. Absolutely destroyed me. Twins, ah, oh, man, four years his old. His wife, his mum. Ah. Oh. Fuck me. What the Fuck people have to hard. enjoy? That's hard, yeah. Make me, like, that's... I just want to say, like, I, when I see shit like that, and then those far right, so like, they take the piss, and they done it, and they're happy that they've done it. I'm just like, you are the most evilest people on the planet, and the whole world is seeing that you are the most evilest people on the planet. You will be down in history, in the history books, you'll be down as the evilest people on the planet. There's no change about it. There's no facts about it. You could try and change it in the Western media books and whatnot, history books. You watch it, the, the world is seeing it. The world will be teaching it. That at this point of time, in 2004, we saw really for the 75 years and longer, the, the, the evilness of the 
far right Israel, Israeli movement, the evilness of that army and how evil those people were, the child killers. They are children killers. They are happy to kill children. Like that's their army. They're so happy to kill children and they think they're tough because one, they're backed up by the US and two, they're fighting against innocent children. They will go down in history books as one of the most evil regime on the planet. Not as a, the yes, maybe a little bit of dominance, but they're not going to go down as like, they conquered this and conquered that. They conquered a little bit, but they've really shown themselves to be the most barbaric, evil people who actually wanted to kill children. you got Israeli soldiers saying that they want to kill babies and shit like that. That's what they're going to go down in history with. You know, all those other conquerors, they conquered many parts of the world and they were very barbaric as well. But very much doubt that they were specifically after like, eh, we're going to go kill the children. I think they would like, like these lot are specifically like, we want to kill children. They will go down in history as the most evil people on the planet was long uh, alongside some of the others as well. I generally can't believe that we're, we're in an era where we we've experienced to see this as well. Uh, yeah. Horrible, man. Horrible, horrible. horrible. My heart is like different towards it. Something yeah. changed in the past year, definitely. Within oh, myself as well. And how I feel people. and how I see things. And it's like Yeah, it's 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 we're seeing it. You know, I think that's what breaks everybody's heart, is that we're seeing it. The you know when you're not seeing it. Yeah, honestly. When you it's not in your face, it's not your worry. But as much as we worry about everyday things and trying to get everyday stuff done, that burdens on me. Before I go sleep, before I wake up, it, it's burdening me. Before when I'm at prayer, it burdens me knowing that I can't do as much as I want to do. So, guys, we've got donation links in the bio, in our Instagram and TikTok page. Uh, they're in the description as well. Please, uh, guys, do what boycott you can to help the people. Guys, Please. three things boycott, that I was regular. Three things that us regular people could do, man, and how you can help. Boycott. Fuck Starbucks, fuck McDonald's, fuck all of the list is online. Boycott as much as you can. I know you can't boycott everything. I, I get it. Same, right? Google and Microsoft. But Starbucks, McDonald's, all those other fast food chains, all those other businesses, boycott them. That's one thing we could do. Donate. Whatever you do, five, ten pounds. Links on the channel. There's so many other links out there. Donate. Free awareness. You know, if you can... Put awareness on your social media and all that sort of stuff, right? At least do one of the three, you know, that's where you can help. So don't think you can't help, don't think you can't do nothing. But yes, Kibbs, it's heartbreaking. But, you know, again, when we were younger, we didn't pay attention. We didn't have social media and the Western news only gave us the propaganda one side of, of, of it and not the real news. Now we're seeing it. That's why there's a burden and it feels like that. But it's not just us, the whole world, the whole world. That's why some of the world like South Africa, you know, Colombia and Turkey and so many other countries, you know, who have already set sanctions and stopped doing business. You know, just more countries need to do that. They need to cut diplomatic ties. They need to cut business. And if, eventually it, it will, they would have to get rid of that far right regime and put a more peaceful one in place, make a two state solution and then start growing again. Both countries, Palestine and Israel. But mm. and while that far right group said they would never be in peace Never. What do you think is going to happen when you take, if you was to just kill everyone in Gaza and take over the West Bank and, and, and Palestine? What do you think is going to happen? You think the world's just going to be like, you, you're, that government has put that them people in forever danger for what they're doing. Mm. So they need to get rid of that government, put a more peaceful one, make a two-state solution. And that's the only way to peace. And the whole world sees it and knows it, except them. What do you think is going to happen? You think you're just exactly. going to bomb, bomb all of them and get and take the take the land? It's not going to happen. And you're, you're surrounded by so-called enemies that you keep saying, enemies that you have caused. Um, it's, it's stupid. But guys, those are the three things that you can all do, man, as regular people. Boycott, donate, awareness. Exactly. Free Palestine. Free Palestine, guys. Congo and Sudan. That's it. That's it. All right, guys, let's move on. Um, Kibbs, I didn't speak about this last time, but let me share mm. my screen. But rest in peace, the Chino Excel who passed away. Um, can you see my screen here? Yeah. yeah. Chino Excel, man, big in the hip hop world. His name, his real name is uh, Derek Keith Barbosa. 
Bo, yeah. that he's we we've known him from old school hip hop days, and look at the lineup of the sort of records that he's done. The people's, he's like the Beat Nuts and Immortal Techniques and Big Pun. Like here, here's the lineup, man. I wanted to scroll through this, but uh, he's got his solo albums for like which my nineties rapper, man. Uh, Here to save you all, like mm. uh, I, I want to go through the list actually, but look, like from nineteen ninety two, um, from from when he started, and some of the collaborations that he's done, he, like with Immortal Technique, you got. Um, what else did I see? I saw loads, man. Big pun. There's so like, many, just, bro, man. Just so the many. whole nineties crew. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about so from nineteen ninety nineteen ninety six and onwards, man. Nineteen ninety two and onwards. I mean, rest in peace to him, man. We didn't get a chance. I, I completely forgot to bring it up last time, but I wanted to give him a shout out. Um, on on this one, look, big pun. Kings with big pun. I mean, big pun's one of my favorite rappers of all time. Um, yeah, man. Just. Nah. Rest in power, man. Rest in power, King. He's a great influence in the hip hop era, and you know, stuff we grew up on, bro. You know, that's like, that's a piece of us. You know, what I mean, he gave us music that we would always love and adore, and we still listen to it to this day. You know, what I mean, there's an odd one or two tracks that may come out that maybe be cool, but nothing will be as, you know, legacy that he left behind. Oh, uh, rest in peace, man. Yeah, fifty years old. That's that's young still, man. Nineteen seventy four to two thousand twenty four. Mm. Rest in peace, Chino XL. Um, mm. cool, man. Well, look, let's let's move on on to a brighter note, man. Let's start getting into some reviews of movies and shows and whatnot. Let's start off with Umbrella Academy season four, the season finale. Have you seen this yet? I haven't, bro. I haven't. So that's it's on my list to watch next. Okay, okay, okay. Um, how do I review this without spoiling it, man? So you know it's the season finale, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so look, man, I've really enjoyed this show. Like it, as we've already discussed it, it's like a, discussed it in the past, like a dysfunctional family, it's like the X-Men uh, and whatnot. This as a season finale, it didn't, it didn't, there was something missing. There was something mm. missing. Like the, the urgency, it didn't feel like there was an urgency and Considering okay. it being a season finale, I didn't feel like I missed them at the end, you know? Like, I'm just, okay. uh, you know, you know, generally with season finales, with shows that I've been following, with characters I've been following for the longest time, I would feel an emotion behind it when it's done. Like, oh, shit, I can't believe it's done. I didn't feel that. I didn't feel something was missing, man. Something emotional was missing uh something something big was missing because each one of these seasons had something big like a world ending yeah, massive. Event. yeah exactly yeah it was okay. massive. So, extension 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 yeah extension ext- i can't even say it man it's got my extin- extinction level extinction event extinction level yeah. event yeah yeah i mean this had that too just like the other ones that's what i'm saying so it was similar, but it, there was there was something missing. It just didn't feel urgent. It didn't feel emotional. I didn't feel I'm connected to the characters, but I didn't feel connected to them at the end to be like okay, like oh, like my heart. It was just kind of like okay, like this is the end of another. It felt like an end of another episode or another season rather than the end. Um, okay. So that was my, that's my honest review, man. I still enjoyed it. I still love the characters. I thought it was very, you know, funny, great action, great story, uh, charismatic from all the characters. The character building is so great. We've been known them for a couple of years now, or maybe like 10 the, years now. I think the hard part of something like this is you give us good writing. And I think that's where it sounds like the writing wasn't as strong as the previous seasons. Where, as you're talking about urgency, uh, we already know the characters. You just want because why? What, what I learned from the the previous three seasons is that it had this urgency, and each episode had this like weight on its shoulder, and we were carrying that weight with us as well because we want to know more as well. So it sounds like it didn't have that effect on each episode on where it was heading, and that could be due to the writer strike that happened last year. Where it kind of, they're, they're, yeah, I think that's where a lot of weak writing and a lot of, you know, movies have suffered the weakness of it. weak writing, weak story, weak attention. And I feel like this could be the problem. I mean, I watch it and then I, I can go into it, but I've heard mixed reviews about yeah, it. Yeah, it's just that, man. I mean, it could be that. It could be that. It's just that, like, each episode was still fun and there were still great things going on, but I'm like, man. <laughs> If this is the end, why is this happening right now? 
it, it, yeah. it, again, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to spoil it, but in certain episodes, like why, why it feels like you're so far apart from the end. And when the end happens, it just happens. And you're like, oh, wait, wait, that, that's it. Like my heart's not hurting. Like I wanted to feel a little bit, I've, mm. I've been with you guys for like 10 years now, like the, the yeah. Avengers and whatnot. So I want my heart to kind of hurt. Like when it's the end and I, I didn't feel that. And I, I was, and I just feel like each episode was, it spreaded them out rather than bring them in. And only at the end, they've kind of brought them in together and you're kind of like, hmm, okay. All right. Season four done. Academy, uh, Academy done. And then you move on. And that's how I felt personally. Um, my personal opinion, I'm not saying it's shit and I'm not saying you shouldn't watch it and not finish it off because you should. Uh, it just didn't have that for me. And I was like, ah, oh, for season finale, that's what I would have preferred. No, that's cool. I'll definitely check it out. Definitely. It's on my list to watch. Cool. All right. The next thing I watched, I watched Twister. Yes. Um, what did you think? Yeah. Glenn Powell's, Glenn Powell, Powell Karen Ship, <laughs> Shipka, and all these people. Anyway, <laughs> fucking up names again. Um, and we saw David, uh, David, you know, what, you know what's that? <laughs> Corin, Corin he's, our, he's our Superman and... I didn't even reckon, you know what? Just looking at it now, I was like, holy shit, it's awesome. I can't even remember him from the movie now. Who the fuck was he? That's bad. It was uh, uh, Anthony's, Anthony, isn't it Anthony? The Hispanic character's uh, dry, uh, navigator. Oh, he, he was, was in the cat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, I should have, obviously I'm not going to judge him of this movie. Uh, this movie, bro, um, you know, it's okay. It's okay, listen. Listen, like, it starts off very... You saw it, right? Obviously, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. It starts off very deep and whatnot. And I was like, that's why you don't fuck around with Mother Nature, man. You don't go into a tornado, right? But anyway, listen, I'm glad there's <laughs> scientists out there that do this stuff and put their lives on the line. So respect to them to try and understand it and to see... I think genuinely they're trying to figure out a way to tame it so it doesn't, you know... So if they could tame yeah. certain Mother Natures, they could do that. Some you, you can't, like, probably earthquakes and, and volcanoes. But if this is something that they can tame, because they have things that control the weather out here, right? In Dubai, they do it, like, they do the raining and all that sort of stuff, right? Um, so if they could... Generally, people are trying to figure out the science of a tornado, cool, but tornado is Mother Nature, and that is scary. Thinking about a portal that opened up from the sky in a whirlwind that just destroys everything fucking around it and it moves at the same time. Fuck that shit, man. Um, so anyway, that's why I was like, man, those, those people are crazy. Uh, it does start off like dramatic, all that sort of stuff. Listen, man, it's okay. You know, I wouldn't say it's like yeah. a great, great, great movie in my opinion. It, 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 it does express... I guess it gives a shout out to the real tornado chase or scientists who are trying to figure out ways to tame tornadoes and try and help people and whatnot. So respect to mm. those people. Um, so maybe it was a highlight to them. As, as a movie um, outside of that, no, yeah, it's, it's cool. I like I like Glenn Powell's man, handsome, uh, charming dude, man, freaking hillbilly to a tornado twisting, chasing dude with his rocket launchers <laughs> and shit. He made me laugh, my freaking cowboy. Um, but yeah, the story was a bit predictable at the end and, and i knew yeah, oh, yeah, she's yeah. gonna get with him i get it and this and the best friend he became a bastard because of business and the person he was looking working with as soon as you see them it's like uh, uh, any business dude that's just taking advantage of people so you see all of that sort of stuff um no no of course, but, course you know course. with nowadays cgi and everything it makes the tornadoes look scary man i mean they are so yeah scary. it does doesn't it yeah and if you see it does, it does. YouTube videos of tornadoes like i say man that's a scary thing just a like I say, a portal just opening up from the sky and just blowing the shit out of everything. Yeah. I want to be around that. Crazy. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, same thing, bro. Like it's not like the most amazing movie in the world. I felt I felt like in the middle it dragged a little bit because you know she was suffering loss. She didn't know how to get her game back, and I felt like they lingered on that a bit too long. But other than that, as I I enjoyed it for that watch. It's not a movie that I'll go watch again. Twister's original movie, I'd watch again. I don't know what it is about old films that have that tangibility because they, it's not CGI. It is CGI to a certain extent, but a lot of it's real set pieces and stuff like that. I know they tried to do similar things on this as well. I don't know, bro. Movies are not grabbing me like as much as the old stuff. When I go back to the old stuff, I'm getting, I'm like dad now. I love the old stuff. 
You know what I mean? That's crazy. I never thought I'd come to that age where I'm like, I still love the old stuff. But it's a good film, good watch. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna take that away from there. If you an hour and a half, two hours of uh, of a good action CGI fest sort of movie, it's fine for what it is, bro. It it will kill time. It it, it won't be a cult classic like the original. But it has, you know, Glenn Powell is a charismatic actor. I feel like he's gone through the reins of acting for the past 30 years and now starting to get his foot in the door and do these cool things. Like he was in that movie, I think I spoke about on the last episode, uh, last episode or previous episode, uh, uh, The Hitman, mm. which was quite funny. And he's mm. he's actually really cool in it. Uh, good looking dude, man. What can I say, mm -hmm. man? You put a good looking charismatic dude up on the screen. The ladies are going to go watch it, bro. I said, I said. Listen, it's interesting you call the call the first one a cult classic, and you're interested to watch it. I'm, I'm not personally. Maybe I'm just not into movies about natural disasters Disaster and shit. Yeah, 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 I'm not yeah, really yeah. into those sort of things, to be honest with you. But hey, it's cool to watch. Me and the missus watched it. We did like take our time and watch. I've been doing that recently, like watch for like thirty minutes a day type of thing, just to kind of make sure I keep my attention. And I noticed that if we try to watch a movie and I'm not engaged, I start getting on my phone. But if I just watch it while I'm eating and I do thirty minutes a day, I feel like I engage with it more. But yeah, no, listen, yeah. cool movie, guys. Cool movie. Do check it out. Um, you know, and whatnot. Um, next one, bro, that I saw. Fly me to the moon. This one was a Apple, was it an Apple Apple movie? I think it was. Hey, but really good, really good. Listen, Channing Tatum, Scarlett Johansson, um, good looking couple and whatnot. Based in the fifties, based around the first, you know, Apollo eleven and everything. Yeah, I, I think this movie <laughs> for those people who really think that they never got to the moon and never touched foot on the moon, this really takes the piss out of, like, really puts you in lingo. Because this whole movie, because she's an advertising marketing uh, expert in this movie, right? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Yet? No, I haven't seen it. I've, I've seen the trailers, but okay. Yeah, so, go on, ba keep going. so basically, like she's kind of put in that space project to kind of like advertise uh, NASA and Apollo Eleven, yeah. and also there's a point where it's like, oh, we need you to make a set because regardless if we touch the moon or set one of the moon, we need footage, right? So for people who think the, the moon landing was fake, this movie really touches on both elements. Like, was it real? Was it fake? <laughs> I mean, we don't know. Like, it, this, that conversation constantly happens. Um, yeah, to this day, yeah. To this day. Like, apparently, they, you know, they went up to the moon back then in 1950-whatever, it was a race against Russia. That's what really what that's right. Yeah, that was the main thing. Yeah. The main thing. Listen, Operation Paperclip. If you haven't seen that or read that book, read that book. It's a very important book that, that listen, after World War II, it's not, I'm not making it up. This is a book. It's it's mm. written knowledge. After World War II, the US took over a thousand Nazi scientists because they wanted to use them just for like the moon, uh, science uh, and, and NASA weapons all that sort of stuff right so anyway uh and it was a race to get to the moon because they wanted to be russia or whatnot um but you know it, uh it, like i said it apparently we haven't been to the moon since then or they've done a couple of other things but it's weird because technology is so advanced now i don't know how anyway if you watch this movie, this is a yakub movie bro this is, listen this someone, is a yakub movie. someone who doesn't believe they went to the moon will watch this movie and be like i told you i told you someone who believes they've been to the moon will watch this movie and be like i told you i told you so it's it's really that it's really that so <laughs> it's a uh, mixture of both i heard it's good i'll it definitely is. check it out i will i will check it out it's on my list uh but i will watch it i will watch it definitely Great movie. I, I really enjoyed it. And those two are cool and they made it very funny and, and very bright and, and animated and whatnot. So it, it's not like a boring okay. sort of thing. It's a very uh, fun movie to watch. And uh, ever since Gambit as well, I'm just loving Channing Tatum. Ch Channing Tatum even more now. So uh, I want to see more Channing Tatum. <laughs> I'm going to make a name for myself. He did it. He's in Bear Movies. He, Bear movies we uh, missed the screening for... Well, actually, we didn't get it. Don't know why. We, do, we cover all movies on the podcast, but Blink Twice, which is in which is Zoe Kravitz's uh, new directorial debut movie. Uh, but they didn't give us tickets for it. I'm not sure why, but yeah. Mm, okay. All right. Well, yeah, check it out when you have time. Um, ah, The Instigator. I saw this one. Did you see this one? No. Matt, it, Matt Damon. 
Casey Beflick. Uh, bro, yeah. I love these guys when they're together. There's just this Boston feel. I don't know, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah, from yeah. That, they're, that crew, uh, Hong Chow. They, bro, this movie was really good. It was like... Uh, what's the This guy's in it, which is awesome. Paul Walter Huss. Huss. It, it's, it's, bro, it's like a heist. It's a heist movie. Right, would load okay. like, like almost like a lock, stock, and two stocks, two lock, stock, two smoking barrels type of yeah, yeah, element of different characters and whatnot. Uh, and a heist movie, each individual ha- in each individual has their own reason to get involved and do this or whatnot. Uh, it's really good, bro. It's it's really fun and entertaining to watch. Their characteristics are always fun uh, to see. Uh, this Ben Affleck's brother, right? Is that his brother? He's he's awesome. yeah, that's his brother, Casey Affleck. Yeah, makes me laugh, bro. He's he's wicked in it. Um. Yeah. Very good. I'll check movie. it out. Very want, good. No, I'll, I'll probably watch that tonight. I feel like when these these boys, you know, when like um Seth Rogen and the boys or Adam Sandler and the boys make a movie, right? When these boys make their movie, like it, it, it's awesome. Their, their dynamics is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Story is good. It's fun to watch. Uh, great movie, man. Um, yeah. What else is there? Well, we unlikely partners phone together for a heist. However, when everything yeah. goes early, the team ends up outrunning police backward. But yeah, I mean, like that is that it's that it's a heist movie, right? I don't want to give it's away. It's a heist too movie. Much, but all it's, right, it's cool. good to watch and just see the comedy comedic aspect behind it and the reasoning behind it and all that sort of stuff. What's the action like? The action's great. Great cast, car, yeah. chase scenes, uh, just okay. great. Just like one of those, <laughs> when they're doing the heist and shit goes wrong and you've got loose cannons and stuff like that, it just it's just like those sort of characters and whatnot uh, in the movie. So there's, and there's some like great outsmart, outsmarting moments in the movie as well. Okay, yeah, cool. like, that was pretty cool and stuff. So that was, that was another fun one that we watched. The Challenger, I watched this one. Um, okay. Zendaya, Mike Fest, Josh O'Connor. Um, so this one, was about tennis but it was mm-hmm. about some diabolical this woman was diabolical man she was like a, a bastard man like there was this love triangle okay so tennis is the premise of the, of the movie right and this girl Zadea's character is obsessed with the game obsessed right mm-hmm. obsessed to a point the whole her whole life and the whole relationship she had with these two who, who, are, who are like close boys or whatnot they were tennis yeah tennis partners or breaking them up, they're turning against each other because they want to get with her, all that sort of, she's just using, not using them, but she wants to be with tennis, everything's got to be about tennis, she wants to win, but it's, I think, yes, tennis is the premise, it's the obsession that you get with something, Yeah. and when you're obsessed with something, it overtakes your life, forget about mm. morale, forget about morals, forget about your family, your kids, all that stuff, you're cheating, doing this sort of stuff, because you're obsessed with this one thing and you want to be the best at it. But if if you're not your partner, whoever's going to be the best at it, and if they're not winning, I want to be with someone else. And just like the, the game to me didn't have any intensity behind it. I didn't feel the intensity yeah. of the game. What I found intensity was the relationship and what's going to happen. Because the game was kind of almost determining the um, intensity of the relationship. You see what I'm saying? Um, okay. And I like what I what I do enjoy about this movie is the 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 story, the backstory that they did because they went and done a lot of back and forth, and they done it really well. Like it wasn't really confusing. It wasn't like a story that started at this time and ended here. It started at the end, and they gave you backstories in between. And you're like, ah, oh. that, that was shot really nicely. Like because I didn't feel confused. Normally those sort of things might confuse you. You're like, where are they now? What's happening now? But it it was shot really well in the way that it wasn't that confusing. <laughs> Uh, but Zendaya's awesome in it. She's really good, man. She's absolutely awesome in it. Um, and the rest of the guys are awesome too in it. So yeah, great. Yeah, another another fun movie to watch. This was the one that meme came out when because uh, both they, they have a little scene together, a little Medusi scene together, uh, and a lot yeah. of people were just putting a meme out with Tom Holland panicking while you know Zendaya's doing the thing with the two. But anyway, that that was the where the the, Z, the meme came from. The Challenger guys, check it out. Pretty pretty decent movie. Cool. Uh, all right, listen, before we get into the news, did you have anything that you watched that you wanted to chat about? Yeah, bro, I've got I've watched a fair bit, man. On a on a on a side note, yeah, I watched this wicked documentary called RoboDot, which is on Amazon Prime at the moment. So guys, check it out. And it's like a four episode uh season. So sorry, yeah, uh season it's a four episode uh documentary about the making of this movie, and it's got all the actors in it. Uh producers directors how it went and 
the, the stuff they went through in this movie, bro, is insane. Uh, listen, man, 40 years. What, what movie? So, Rob, Rob, oh, Robocop. Robocop. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the documentary is called Robodot. Really good. Check it out. I, I, I'm, I can't even say much about it. It's such a good documentary because it gives you all the intricate details about the script, the direction, when it was made, how did they make it. They had so much issues making it as well. Uh, characters that they wanted to play in it that didn't end up, they ended up casting somebody else. The movie's a cult classic. I absolutely love that movie. That movie has a really underlying uh, silver lining to it about business, society, the way things are controlled and corruption and uh there's there's the, obviously Robocop shooting that guy in the dick and I wish yeah. we could find that episode where we were dying because someone made a toy about it. I wish we could go back and find that episode. Oh we bro, that episode is wicked. But there's a there's a funny meme that makes me laugh about Robocop as well. It's like man got literally killed on the job and they still made him go to work. Uh, which made that's a funny meme. But yeah, no, you're right. Do you know what's crazy, bro? I've been trying to watch Robocop on Amazon out here, right? So we could do it as a retro movie review. They don't have it in, I got Amazon, they don't have it in English. It's in Italian and every other language, but it's not in English. Like, my whole Amazon is in English. Everything is English, but Robocop's not in English. I'm like, what the fuck? That's what I was going to say. Like, like let's what let's do that as a retro, because I saw it recently, watched the documentary, and now I I didn't even know there was a TV show. I knew there was a TV show, but I've never seen it. I watched the first episode yesterday, bro. I don't know how they got away with some of the stuff on TV, but... It, it's like cheesy. It's a cheesy good watch. Really basic, but a cheesy good watch. Like I, I enjoyed it for what it was. So that was, that's something that you guys should check out. I think it's the, the Robo Doc is a great documentary, man. Uh, movies wise, what have I seen? So hey, listen, let me start off with Alien Romulus. Romulus, no spoilers. Uh, where is my? Guys, if you don't know, we're on Letterboxd. I put all of our reviews for the movies that we watch and even all the movies I watch generally at home when I stream. Uh, do, 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 Let me just share Let's talk about Lockstock. Lockstock? I feel like... Did I speak about that on an episode recently? No, but you rewatched that. All right, let's go. So the last thing I spoke about was probably Hitman, so we'll start. But anyway, let's start yeah. with Alien Robocop. So Ronald, this was Robocop, yeah. Robo guys. Just, just, in, just yes, as a, as the creation a, of Robocop. Yeah. yeah, just sharing my screen here so you guys can see. Um, Cool. Let's move on to Alien Romulus, you said, right? Yeah. All right. I'm just bringing it up here so people who are watching the watching the YouTube... No, that's cool. It. I mean, directed by uh, Fede uh, Alvarez, uh, who brings this classic franchise back to the original this movie is in between alien and aliens so that's why it still has that classic old uh feel to it so kaylee spacey is basically based about a couple of uh kids that are on uh one of the outreach posts on a different uh world uh and they want to escape they don't want to be doing any mind work no more in the process they go to a ship and all hell breaks loose on that ship that's all I can say. Bro, I, absolutely I, awesome. I had a good time watching this. It's my second favorite film this year. Damn. Ah, oh, man. I wish I got the screening. And I wanted to go cinema last week and get a chance to do because I watched it from Wolverine again because I really wanted to watch that again. But I wish I got the screening. I should have pushed it. But yeah, go on, go on. Carry it's on. Right. It's okay. I mean, we're, we're, we're doing it. We're doing it. Anyway, so Alien Romulus successfully captures the intense fear and claustrophobia atmosphere that made the original Alien a classic. By focusing on smaller, isolated settings and emphasizing suspense over spectacle. The film returns to the franchise horror roots. There is a slow build of tension combined with relentless sense of dread. Uh, this mirrors the iconic terror that the 1979 uh, original had. Uh, the characters feel vulnerable and the xenomorph once again is terrifying, bro. This thing looks, they got some really good scenes in this one. And uh, they go back to basics, uh, the approach that they have on this one. Was uh, Ridley unstoppable... Scott involved at all? Yeah, he was a producer. Okay, okay. He was a producer. Uh, it's refreshing return to the series is really good, bro. I, I had a good time with it. Um, uh, when I watch it eventually, let's do a proper review on it because I really, I do. Really yeah, 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 definitely. definitely. I really do, definitely. yeah. Definitely. But I'll leave it to that, man. Other than that, that was really good. So, uh, moving on. So, 
Here we go. Let's start. I think. Uh, I don't know if I spoke about it. Did I speak about the holdovers? Holdovers, no. What movie? Yeah. Yeah, which came out in two thousand and three. Uh, oh, it's got such uh... a good film, bro. Such a good film. Uh, so uh, Paul okay. Giamatti, uh, Dominic Caesar. If you go down, I just need to see the woman's name who won the Oscar for Best Actress, uh, Best Supporting Actress, uh, Devine Joy Randolph. She, bro, it's a beautiful movie. It's touching. Some people maybe find it a bit slow, but I absolutely adored it. I feel like I have spoken about this already, but I'm just going to quickly go over it. I don't remember. I mean, I, I don't remember you speaking about it, man. But maybe great movie, did. bro. Great. It's a good film. Really good film. Uh, Lockstock, Two Smoking Barrels. Shout out to Guy Ritchie. I feel like I've spoken about this, but I want to shout out again. Great film. Uh, and because I watched the Ministry of Ungentleman e Welfare, I just wanted to give him a shout because I feel like Guy Ritchie gets a bit of slack with the movies that he makes recently, but they're still really catchy. The direction of the way it looks is really good and smart. Uh, he picks like these unique actors to do these crazy ass roles, which are amazing. And then the music is absolutely awesome. So Guy Ritchie, shout outs to him. He, I, uh, I've always said he's like, uh, he's our, like the British Quentin, Quentin Tarantino. Tarantino. I, yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah. compare, but what I'm saying is no. like just, he's ours. Great like, dialogue you know, and yeah, stuff like that. The yeah. dialogue's the best. I love the dialogue in his in his movies. Because I think they're doing The Gentleman season two. Um, yes, I heard. So that's, yeah. You could watch these movies for the dialogue. And that's what I love about these movies. Like just that alone. But yeah. No, same here. What's wrong, Bubble? You got bogeys all over you. Uh, yeah, so that was that. Listen, shout outs to Ryan Gosling and em Emily Blunt for The Four Guy. I absolutely enjoyed that film. I do not know why this movie didn't get the love that it deserved. It is a great action packed 80s, 90s feel type of movie, bro. And such a great cast. I had fun watching this, bro. And I'm absolutely shocked that this movie doesn't get the love it deserves. Only reason why it, they released it in February, it didn't have like, and and within a couple of weeks it was out on VOD, which was kind of upset him because I think this movie deserves a lot more love than it got. So that's the four guy, Alien Romulus. Uh, so recently, here we go. Uh, the Union, Mark Wahlberg, Halle Berry. Oh, Netflix. I'm watching that. We're gonna watch that tonight. Yeah, how was that? <coughs> It's a good, fun movie. What more can I say, bro? Okay. Very, I, I, they did a really okay. stylistic choice for, by using... Uh, like It's really glossy, bro. They made even... Because some of it's based in London. London doesn't look like that. Uh, but it's a good, fun watch, bro. I mean, I gave it a three out of five. It, it, it's fine. It's, it, you'll enjoy it because you... Mark Wahlberg's charismatic on the screen anyway, with, with whatever he does. Uh Baz Luhrmann's Elvis, bro. Oh, okay. You haven't seen that one. Austin Butler. I've never seen it. Bro, oh, this movie was brilliant. The movie was brilliant, bro. The way the yeah. storytelling, the way it ran through, the music was off the hook. Uh, I really felt bad about... Because they give you the mental aspect of what Elvis went through. Tom Hanks' character was a bastard, yeah. isn't it? Well, that's man, that guy's a penguin. He's a in the, end, the penguin, bro. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In the industry, like the thing is, in any in like those entertainment industries, that dude, like Tom Hanks' characters, that Colonel, whoever Tom, like that individual of that is always Tom a bad. Yeah, yeah, because they don't give a shit about the artist. They never do. They care about the money. They care about the business. Uh, and yeah, no, exactly. It's what they're going for as well. But listen, bro, Baz Luhrmann directed this superbly, bro. I I really enjoyed it. Like I haven't been stuck to the screen like that in a while. Where I'm like, oh my god, like I'm captivated and and austin butler's uh performance that guy's obvious bro. insanely good bro insanely good uh a movie i it took me ages to watch great 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 film bro great it's one of those i could watch that again that's a rewatchable really good movie bro i like that that was a good film and then one that came out of the blue and i just clicked play and ended up enjoying it for what it was it's weird. It's called Weird. It's on. It's on uh, Amazon Prime right now. Uh, the out the the Alkovich story. Where Ali? Where Al movie? Yeah. 
Oh, is it on Prime? Yeah. Listen, bro. Wait, great. Wait, it's got... Black. Daniel yeah, Radcliffe. Bro. Yeah, it is a great, great, uh, great cast. Great. It's a good fun. Again, I I gave it a three out of five on 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 Letterbox just because of how funny it was, bro. Oh, this movie people. has an amazing cast, bro. But yeah, it's not that so random. Listen, man, I'm going to give a shout out to Daniel Radcliffe, yeah? Because, like, I've only seen him in the Harry Potters. And because I'm going on my Harry Potter journey, I'm watching the kid grow. Oh, Daniel Radcliffe has such a dynamic range. I don't think he gets enough credit for the work he does because he's done some wonderful, good movies outside the Harry Potter. Like uh, The Gun Aikido. I love that movie. That was a good one. This is very good, bro. And praises to him for playing this character. Well, playing Word Al Yankovic. And it, bro, the movie is so random, so bizarre, so messy, but so jokes, bro. And to watch you it, get I the didn't, chance to check it I out. I didn't realize check it, it exists. We used to listen to him when we were young because he used to take the piss out. We used to do spoof of all the tunes that we used to love, like yeah, yeah. Bad and Gangster's Paradise and all that sort of stuff. Exactly. Right? Um, yeah, yeah, I had no idea that this was uh, out. I'll check, I'll put it on my list. Yeah, pop that on your list. And that's it, bro. That's it. All right. That's it for me. Cool, 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 cool. Well, on that note, then let's get into the news, man. We'll bust through the news and we'll finish off with um retro with well, the Bruce Lee movies and retro, retro movie reviews. So, first up on the news, Supercell season two has been announced, which is awesome. Um Ratman told Netflix he wants three seasons minimum, and I hope he gets it. I mean, I haven't seen season two yet, but I hope he gets it because season one was fucking amazing. Uh, if you haven't seen it, guys, check it out. Superhero drama Supercell has, after weeks of speculation, now been renewed for season two, with Ratman having made it clear that he envisions the series as compromise, uh, compromising of three seasons. Com- Good on it. Good comprising on it. of three seasons. Comprising, it's yeah that the C- sci-fi series has been given the green light, especially after all the critics acclaimed that the cliffhanger ended. Uh, great, wicked shot. Guys, if you haven't seen our podcast with the real, real t- small-time critics, we gave that, uh, we spoke about that with, with them. Uh, check that out. Absolutely, like, amazing time catching up with them. Uh, but the show was fantastic. It was one of those mm. ones that just came out of nowhere and everyone loved it. So I'm happy that there's a season two for Supercell. That's uh, right. D- no, absolutely awesome. Yes, bro, well, cool. Um, D23 happened, so there was some announcement. The new Avatar Avatar 3 is called Fire and Ash, and it's going to be released in December 2025. So another billion-dollar movie there, I suppose. Um, but yes, that was announced. Uh, November 19th, 2025 is the announcement for that one. So another year and a bit to go for that. Incredibles 3 is back. And it's um, the director, what's his name? Birdman. Uh, Brad Bird is back, the yep. director as well. So, cool. Incredibles 3, that was announced. Invincible creator Robert Kirkman wants animated series to run for at least seven or eight seasons. That would be enough to cover the comic, entire the entire comics, oh. uh, cover to cover. So he's ambitious. I guess if there's success... That he'll he'll you know will get it. I enjoy the cartoons. I haven't read the comics to be honest, but if he's saying himself that the eight seven eight seasons will justify the comics, then that'll be amazing because I could just watch the show. Um, so same here, bro. Know. Definitely same here. Really yeah. good. Really good. Is yeah. Uh, nothing else to write read here, but I guess that's it basically. Uh, I'm trying not to pin it down to a number because it's somewhat of a movie moving target basically what he's saying, but he's trying to go for the eight range of eight. So that's awesome. All right, cool. Good on you. Uh, the next piece of news is um, Pacific Rim prequel series in development at Legendary Entertainment on the first look TV deal with Eric Hessen, Hessenzer exclusive. Uh, okay. So Pacific Rim, yeah, fun movie. Look, I, I know the second one was a bit iffy for whatnot, but such a great movie, man. The, 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 Ken, the, Kaijus, the Kaijus and the the big robots and shit, that shit was fucking awesome. That's the like anime, bro. Uh, especially number two, they had some real anime scenes. Gundam, Gundam win anime scenes. And in Japan, they have a fucking kaiju. No, they have a, one of these Pacific Rims 
walking around, bro. I've seen it in real life. It's crazy for the way this big ass robot, the Gundam robot moves. Japan's forget like warheads and uh, all the other countries are focusing on military arms. They're fucking building ro robots, bro. <laughs> it's crazy. It's really cool when you look at you like, oh my god, I'm looking at a big ass robot that walks and shit opens up. It's fantastic. So uh, anyway. This will be enjoyable, I think, because there's nothing else to expect from this movie, but big robots fighting big ass monsters, pure fun. Exactly, bro. I, I enjoyed it, man. I liked the anime that it brought out on Netflix as well, which was really good. So looking forward to it. Guys. Moving on. All right. I've done a little short about this one. The Acolyte cancelled. Let's just. No so what do we think, guys? What do we think? So this was very divided, right? A lot of people... A lot of people hated it. Some people liked it. You know, there was a, a cultural thing that always gets involved, unfortunately, but it does. Uh, listen, man, I'm going to be, listen, I'm going to be honest. I think, honestly, still think it's one of the best saber battles I've seen in any Star Wars shows. I, I think this gave us that, in my personal opinion. I do Amen. think, I do think um, the only, I, I don't have any interest on the characters. That's my thing. I, I don't care about any of the characters. Um and that's why I'm not at all, don't give a shit if, if it's going to be carried on or not. That's in my personal opinion. I do feel sorry for, the only character that I did like was the, uh, the uh, Ki, what was his name? Kima, Himir. Yeah, he yeah. The Sith Lord. I think he looked awesome, character design, his mask looked sick, all that sort of stuff. The double, the double uh, sabers that he was holding, like a samurai, uh, the katana, or whatever. That, that, that looked awesome. And he was awesome. And you know, Lee Jung Jae from from who was from um um uh the Korean show um uh, fuck, what's it called, man? Fuck, I forgot the name Squid of it. Games. Man. Squid Games, yeah. Squid fucking games. I I believe he really took up English to be in a Star Wars show. I heard, bro. And, yeah, and, that's and, what I heard as well. And he got, he made his dream come true with this. So it's a little bit heartbreaking from that because he was pretty cool. He was well, he was pretty good as well in this. Um, but you know, the, you know, listen with the story and everything, it just took me away from everything. Like, like I said, the martial arts, the saber actor, the saber battles were amazing. You know, it did, it did take a, 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 a it did take a shot at the Jedi's that they were not perfect. Yeah. They were not perfect. They That's made right. mistakes and all that stuff too. Which some people liked, some people didn't. The whole witchcrafting with the force people were like what the fuck are you doing like they didn't yeah. like that stuff either the third season episode i remember that's where i kind of lost it there was a lot of um you know all these witches and stuff i don't know man i don't know i didn't even realize danif uh, danif keen was an x-23 with danif. i can't even remember her oh yeah she was it. yeah yeah that's right but listen man what's she got done man she got killed quick she got killed quickly. Bro, as, as you said, bro, like, they started this off, like, with a a feel to, like, a Jedi murder mystery type of program. But then it went into something else completely, which it's either going to work with people or it's not going to work, bro. Some things are force-fed and some things kind of work. Well, like, as you said, some of the best lightsaber battles we've seen, yeah? But then it's like, how do you keep people engaged, man? I can accept change. I know we got some abuse on TikTok recently about our thoughts on, you know, why we didn't enjoy it. It's because you're not engaging. Why now. we did. Oh, why we did. No, I mean, just our thoughts, like, you know, why why we think it may. I can't remember what the clip was anyway. Bear abuse kicked off. And the guy was like, why? What are you trying to expect? Like the, 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 the Luke Skywalker story still? It's like, no, we're not. Give us good stories the way we can connect to characters. I think the problem is, is that you gave us a bunch of characters that nobody cares about. Soul, who was the main Jedi who was feeling the, the, the guilt and the conscience that he had on top of him. I felt a little bit of that, but then you still didn't let me feel it as much. You still had this murder mystery of all these Jedis dying, but then it kind of died out. Like, I was, I don't know. Like, it just didn't work for me personally. You know, yeah. I, I've watched it, but, you know, it didn't make me care to say, Oh, I'd love a season two. And the only reason why they dropped Yoda at the end of it was that's going to keep people hooked on to whatever happens mm. next. But now nothing's going to happen. So why you put that in there for? Yeah. I mean, look, I... Yeah, I don't know, man. Story, man. Uh, story, character building. Story. 
I don't know characters, man. What, whatever you done with Mandalorian, like you use it as a blueprint. You know, I, yeah. I'm serious, man, because that was great character building. We didn't even know what the hell he looked like. I know we knew it was Pedro Pascal, but it was an yeah. iron a mask. It was a baby Yoda who everyone loved, which was cute. And then they went on missions. And yes, there was an overall mission, but that was just fantastic. You know, um, with these shows, like I feel like Mandalorian, I know it's got a story and whatnot, and I know it does have character building, but I didn't feel like it was forced. It just felt like an episode, another episode of Mandalorian yeah, exactly. and, and Grogu, right? Um, and there's just that. But this, these recent Star Wars shows, they're getting really political and really getting mystical and all this sort of shit. And I feel like... I don't need all of that. Yeah, Maybe you lose something on the way. Maybe they just just give us little short stories. They give us little adventures of Luke Skywalker. Well, I think that's what they need whatever. to do. Yeah. It's the and little I get stuff, it. like... I get that they have to introduce new characters and they want to, right? And you, you know, you're trying to build the universe. You don't want to just get stuck on the old characters. I get that. If you're going to do that, you know, like you did with Mando, he's a perfect example, man. Just stick on one character. Stick on one character. Give us his journey. Give us a backstory. Exactly. Give us some adventure with him or her. Make it fun. Make it lovable. Make that person relatable. Don't make them relatable because... Don't put a brown Bengali Muslim Jedi in there and say, hey, guys, you got to love him because he's you. No, don't do that. Please make me love him or her because of who yeah. they are, not because of what they look like. Please. like yeah, Exactly. If exactly. you're going to put a brown I think that's Bengali, where they lose it, bro. Yeah, I, I'm using it as an example. If you're going to put a brown Bengali Muslim dude on there, make him relatable as an individual his yeah. personality what he's going through his struggles then i would love him as a character but if it's just like exactly g and kids you have to love him because he looks like you get the fuck out of here you've already lost me i don't i don't even want that shit representation is important i get it don't ruin representation by by making them shit i think you make i think you're you're fucking up the representation when you make them shit you give them shit stories and shitty characteristics and whatever man i keep saying it man you know, I'm using it again. But Captain America, I know we, in the beginning we spoke about Chris Evans. Forget about him. Captain America, blonde, blue-eyed, Caucasian dude. I have so much more in common with him than I would, you know, someone from the Acolytes who, who kind of look a bit more like me or have more representation. Why? Because of his characteristics. He just wants to do the right thing. Exactly. Like exactly. So, you know, do that, guys. I, that's my, my opinion on this whole, whole thing. No, of course, of course, bro. I think I think that's what the problem was, bro. The characters didn't engage with most of the Star Wars fans anyway. And to be honest now, we're coming to a point now where all this fandom, bro, some toxic games, bro. No wonder, bro, people... Well, actually, no wonder why we don't get more projects that work better. It's because people mess it up, bro. Yeah. People mess it up. People mess oh, well. it up. When they want more, they want more. And we live in an instant reality now where things are given to us so quick where we used to wait 10 years for i mean look at terminator and terminator 2 10 years later we've got a, a sequel you know what i mean there's no time to process to let it breathe mm -hmm. that's the way it goes no, bro yeah. that's the way it goes mm -hmm. hey you never know things you're gonna get hit hit and misses and right now with star wars and even with marvel and stuff there's been a lot of misses but you get that one off hit and we just had that with Deadpool and Wolverine, for example. So yeah, you know, that's right. It is what it is. It is what it is. Here's another one. Paramount Television Studio shuts down by Paramount Global cuts costs. Cost cuts. That's insane. So, bro. Yeah, Paramount Television Studios, a production facility originally aimed at getting Paramount Pictures back into the business of making TV series, will shut down the latest uh the latest ball of cost cut in by parent corporation Paramount Global as it seeks to eliminate 500 million amid of chaotic shift in the entertainment industry. That's 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 huge, bro. That's huge. A lot of jobs, obviously. I know, that's crazy, bro. Projects that's and stuff insanely, like that. insanely, insanely nuts, bro, that we're coming to that point. Yeah, I mean, obviously you had the writer's car. Obviously you had... Uh, this is television. This That's why it's interesting because I was going to say cinema because a lot of things are being on cinema and whatnot. Yeah. You had the writer's strike. COVID did fuck up cinema in, in one sense. But then you got AI, you know? Um, 
I can't remember who it was, but there's Rogan spoke about it. it was some dude who was making an 800, he was spending 800 million on a studio. And then he, and he saw some things from AI and he was like, why the fuck would I build an 800 million studio? You can do this shit on a computer. So he stopped, he halted his project. So I think a lot of AI is going to take over some of these, some of these TV shows and stuff. And that's what, that what, that's what could be the thing, man. But yeah, that's, that's huge. That's crazy. That's that. Yeah. That's crazy. That's uh, absolutely crazy, bro. But yeah. Cool. Guys, video game stuff. Max Payne gets a remake, man. So Remedy confirms exciting details about Max Payne 1 and 2 remake. Favorite fun game from back in the day. I remember playing it on the PC and shit. Fun Matrix shoot 'em up game. Uh, crackheads and all that sort of stuff. Brilliant game. The Max Payne budget for the budget for Max Payne remake is on par with Alan Wake Two. Remedy said, "I don't know what Alan Wake Two got finished, but I'm a video game." Uh, the ma- the remakes are hence estimate to cost around fifty five million, not accounting for their marketing expenses. Man, video games wow. are expensive, but they make billions. Man, you don't even know. I I, I saw something or heard something recently. The Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto, Auto is all yeah. proper. Uh, Auto <laughs> franchise or whatever has made billions of dollars, bro. Billions, well, that is, yeah. huge. Um, Remedy expects the Max Payne remake to enter active production by mid two thousand twenty four, which it previously estimated would take up to two and a half years to complete. So we're to get these in two thousand twenty six or whatnot. So anyway, these games are mm. fun, man. And on 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 the new gen computer like PS five and whatnot, this could be amazing, man. I remember playing these games they're fun this is something i could get into man so just a you know heads up that this is coming out um all right well guys let's check this out so we got a question um uh again shout outs to what was his name again aaron j watches aaron j watches thank you so much for uh uh, uh, asking a question about what you would like to see on the podcast. And your question was, what's our favorite Bruce Lee movie? I've actually got a Bruce Lee t-shirt on right now. Massive fan of Bruce Lee. I've got my figure right there. Big Bruce Lee fan. I've got two figures there, actually. Um, listen, for me, bro, um, again, rest in peace, Bruce Lee, man. Such a legend, man. To this day, man, mm-hmm. his legacy will live on forever. My favorite movies, I have to say, and I know there's just like a handful of them, uh, I believe six, Obviously, Enter the Dragon is rated as one of the best. That was the big one, Warner Brothers and all that sort of stuff, right? Great philosophy in there, the martial arts. But for me, I, I have to say, my, my favorite was, um, the uh, where is it, man? And uh, Game of Death. Now, I know that got the mm. worst rating. The reason why that's my favorite is because I think that he really, from the martial art perspective, I think Game of Death was the one where he truly kind of expressed the freedom of martial arts. Now they call him like Dana White, who's the CEO of, of uh, the UFC, calls Bruce Lee the grandfather of MMA. Mm. Because Bruce Lee was back in the 60s talking about I don't believe in any styles no more, any ways of doing martial arts. Everything should be you learn and absorb from what's useful and disregard what's not useful for yourself. So really, yeah. he was going out there learning many different martial arts, learning fencing, Western boxing, Kung Fu, Judo, all this sort of stuff, right? And the game of death, I think he expressed that fully. And it was obviously he's when he wearing the iconic yellow costume. And that iconic yellow costume was a representation of no uniform. Like in the UFC and MMA, they just wear shorts, right? That's what this was kind of representing. I don't wear a uniform. I don't wear a gi. I don't wear a kung fu suit. I don't wear no- nothing. Right. And then he goes through a level like a video game and each level he fights a different style. And what he was trying to prove and show in this movie with his martial arts was with no style for me, having no style and not being married to one style and being able to flow. I would be able yeah. to conquer all martial arts styles, the ones that he fought. So he didn't do style against style. He didn't do his style against their style. He adapted That's right. based on the martial arts and the environment and the opponent be it the word a weapon, be it was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, whatever it is, he showed that. So that's why this is one of my favorites because I could watch this over and over and be like, it's like a video game. It's it's like the original blood sport and those type of movies. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. You know, and, it, and it, it, I feel like it's a free expression of martial arts. It is like MMA. Like, and this is back in the 60s. So we're talking about revolution sorry back well what 78 this was but back revolutionary uh from a martial art perspective so i would say this is my favorite um in my opinion but i love all of them to be honest with you 
It's a good choice, bro. It's a good choice. It's a hard one. I feel like with uh, what uh, Bruce Lee has in his... My one's Fist of Fury. Fist of Fury. Something about... Something still so powerful about that movie, about his... His kind of journey throughout that film of where he's where he was to where what he got to towards the end of it and then how many movies replicated this film after mm. there's tons of i mean the only one i can think of is the jet lee one yeah what was that called again fist of legend, De- fist Don of Yen, legend. Don Yen done one um, yeah. i think his master okay his master in this movie was whooping wu which no 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 it wasn't it wasn't um Ah oh, man, Jet, Jet Li done a movie on that too. He is his last kung fu movie. Uh, he played the master. Um, but yeah, oh, so fearless, fearless. Yeah, the Jing, yeah, Jing, yeah, yeah. Jing Dao kung fu school, something like that. It's all linked. That's to this right. One. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I haven't seen it in ages, but it's the only one that comes to my head. It's that dojo scene. He goes in there, busts everybody up. You know, it's been replicated so many times. It's 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 still. There's a great, you know, I was laughing that it just reminded him of a great comedy sketch by Eddie Griffin, where he's talking about that scene. And then yeah, he's, yeah, like, yeah. he's like, if I was in that class and my guy walks in and busts up the black belts and then the master's like, you guys, you guys go uh, up next. next. He's like, my shit is yellow. <laughs> yeah. Or orange. Uh, bro, that, that's a funny comedy sketch, but, he's got away. but yeah, no, great, great scene. And obviously this movie, um, you know, showed the dynamics of, you know, what happened with Japan and China, the yeah. dehumanization of Chinese people by Japan, mm-hmm. you know, back in World War II and all that sort of stuff. That's right, um, that's right. But the Jing, I, forget, I believe this, he was, what's his character's name? It's my head. The Jing Wu Kung Fu School, I believe he, this is the character that opened that school. And yeah. Jet, in fairness, Jet Li played his master. Um, oh man, the names in my head, man, of the character. I should have it. I don't know why it's not here. Um, is, it, is it on there? Uh, go down, go down to the cast. I'm sure it should give you the Shenzhen. Shen, Shenzhen. Shenzhen. There you go. Shenzhen. That's, Shenzhen. It, that's yeah. it. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, brilliant. Brilliant movie. That's a good choice. Good film, well. man. It's yeah. something to sort of watch again, but. I, you know, mo- other movies got inspired by this and still kept the, the kind of foundations of what this film was in their films as well. So Fist of Fury, the one that Donnie ended. Uh, I feel like there's other, you know, that scene with, you know, Ip Man took it as well. Yeah. It's one yeah, of those yeah, yeah. scenes yeah. that was reused over and over again, but worked so well. But I think. I'm trying to remember the ending of this film. This was the one where he jumps up in the air and he kicks the sign, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's right. Yeah, yeah. So. And it ends with like I think all the police officers uh, shoot because he he was wanted for for murder, right? I bet it was that's a murder. Right. Yeah, yeah, because he was getting revenge on one. Oh, he's framed. I can't remember, but the police he jumps up, fly <laughs> kicks, very epic, and I think the police shoot at him or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So, no, good one. That was a good one. Brilliant. Yeah. Thanks for the question, <laughs> man. Thanks for the question. Yeah. Hopefully he... no, sorry. Yeah, you'll tag him on this, right? <laughs> I will, I will. Awesome, awesome. All right, guys. Well, look, let's finish off with this week's retro movie, movie reviews, and we're going to do Demolition Man 1993. Um, <laughs> this movie's brilliant. This movie's fucking brilliant, especially seeing Wesley Snipes' Black is Blade just gave me this vibe back with Wesley Snipes. He is awesome as Simon Phoenix, right? That character, Simon oh, yeah. Phoenix, was absolutely amazing, right? I'm laughing my head off with the, with the way he's kind of like taking the piss out of everything. Uh, you know, when he's when he's in the future and he's trying to get the new gun and he's trying to break down the glass and the guy's like, oh, what seems to be your boggle? And he's my boggle. And he just throws the guy through the window. Like, those sort of <laughs> scenes make me laugh. This is one of those movies as well, where in the beginning, I love the way they ended it back. In the beginning, where Simon Phoenix, I think, uh, what you call it? Stallone's character is trying to get a code from him or where the hostages are. And Simon Phoenix makes a comment saying, uh, uh, I swear my head will fall off if it wasn't attached. And by the end of the movie, it, they bring it back and he kicks his head off. And I thought, I was like, that's a pretty cool, you know, like bring, like, what you call it? Bring back from the beginning of the movie from a little quote that he made there. But, but this movie, right, the future, I was, I was watching it and I was like, how many things... Like, this was supposed to be set in 1930, 19... No, sorry, 2030 or something. Um, 
2032 Los Angeles. And when you look at the cars, you're like, they're not too off with that, right? The self-driving cars like Teslas and shit, we have that now. The new Neuralink, right? When they have uh, the Vaduz between Neuralink yes. and whatnot. They got, they're working on that now, right? There's a few patients out there that's already got a chip in their head to work on new. So they were getting a couple of things right. But obviously the premise of the movie and that future was based on a on a, a communist sort of way, right? In the sense that yeah. you can't think, you can't eat, salt's banned, like burgers are banned. Everything that's yeah. very bad for you is banned. You're not allowed to think for yourself, all that sort of stuff, which ultimately, ultimately builds a society of peace, but a very restricted way of living. And if you don't follow this way of living, then you're demonized as a human being and you've got to go live in the sewers or whatnot, which you saw they were called the rebels or whatnot, just because... Maybe I wanted a burger. No, maybe I want to eat some soap. Like it was literally that's right, that's the, way, right. the, the, the way they had the philosophy was the only way you can gain peace is by taking everyone's rights away to do anything or think of anything, right? Yeah. Which ultimately takes away your freedom of, of speech, your freedom of think, your freedom of will. It takes that away. Um, you know, other movies in the future touched on this, like equilibrium and all that stuff, so you know, take away your emotions or whatnot. But that's the way they saw peace. That's right. And the main villain, obviously, um, he the the guy who incorporated this lifestyle, obviously, he had a certain agenda, which was like business or whatnot. Um, but the futuristic side of things, which was pretty awesome. And Simon Phoenix just it's fun to see those cavemen, as they call them, in that future because they were just <laughs> war. And also the other scene when every time you swear, the, the, the thing goes, Dan, John, John, what's his name? Like, whatever. Um, John Spartan. Yeah, like, John Spartan. You've been John Spartan. Whatever. And what I love was what they kept really good was even if it was a normal scene and they're arguing, he'd be like, you swear, and in the background you hear Dan John Spartan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, that shit was funny, man. Great movie, man. Really fun movie. Excuse me. No, it's a good film, bro. I think it's we're coming to those. We're coming to that time where things are crazily getting similar to what we saw in movies back then. Uh, and Stallone still smashed it. I don't care, man. Uh, I think it's a great film. Stallone absolutely smashed that, uh, and it's great set pieces, bro. You know they're showing LA in the future, bro. I love the way LA looked, but then down in the in the gutter games with the rat burger scene, I was like, excuse me. Yeah, definitely. Um, no, I think I think I, it, it, this this movie is one of those cult classic movies. So fun to watch. Um, and when I say cult classic, it was just it's just like the premise of the movie, um, and then the um, like like every time they think of something that's like. Like the guys who were living in the suit, they look like they were from Mad Max. It always looks like this rogue um, yeah, yeah, yeah. state. And then what, there's this vision of how they're supposed to look. And Wesley Snipes at the end, they were all looking like they dressed like from Mad Max. The Mad Max set a premise of what Savages, quotation mark, looks like in, in, in a civilized world, in, in a so called yeah, civilized yeah, yeah, world. Yeah, that's Savages right. always look in that sort of uh, thing. But even like there was a scene when at the end where. Um, and also what I, again, re-watching the movie, what you realise is the guy unfolds Simon Phoenix and during his rehab, rehabilitation process, they gave him all this, it was weird, they gave him all these smart abilities to like crack computers and be a dang, more, even more of a dangerous person, all that sort of stuff, because they had an agenda to use him to kill the rebellion leader who was underground, right? Um, yeah. And then John Spartan, they, his rehab, rehab, rehabilitation or whatever was like sewing and shit like that. Anyway, there was a scene at the end where they were <laughs> they were unfreezing criminals. And um, Simon Phoenix brings up um, Jeffrey Dahmer. You know, the, 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 the fucking scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, holy shit. Back then, I would never have known. Now I've seen the documentary. And he was like, Jeffrey Dahmer, I love that guy. And like, that guy was a fucking serial killer. But it just goes <laughs> to show how, how much of a serial killer Simon, Simon Phoenix was, because he was a war, exactly. war dude. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, no. Bro, brilliant movie. Great film. If you guys haven't seen Demolition Man, I don't know what your boggle is, man. Such a good scene. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what your boggle is because that is such a great film. And Snipes, bro, peak. He was peak at his time, bro. Great martial artist as well. Without a doubt, 100%. He had some great scenes in that, bro. Some... Yeah. It was visually good to look at as well, bro. That's one oh. thing I enjoy about some of the movies from the 80s. And, and what I noticed watching that Robocop TV series yesterday was visually they looked stunning, bro. 
It looks really good. I, I, I love the look it? of the 80s yeah. and 90s. It, they look better than some of the movies we get now. Because some movies, like with The Union, <clears throat> listen, good fun watch. There are, you, when you watch it, we'll talk about it, but it was so clean, bro. It's HD, I can see it's clean. I miss that gritty, raw film look, bro. You know, I don't know. That's just me. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. There's something about like when you look at Robocop in that 80 movie, and we'll do a retro movie on him. Uh, but this movie itself, you know, again, the shadings, the color, the, the darkness, the, the, the rubble, and it, it's not, it's, it looks messy. It's like the camera's old. So it, it looks like the, the, the picture that is taken is having grittiness, which I, I think in those type of movies, when you're showing, right, when you're trying to show an LA that's fucked up, when you're trying to show an underground that's fucked up, it emphasizes on the grittiness, you know what I mean? Like, imagine that movie in HD. Now, above the world, LA looks beautiful. You want to see that in HD. But when you go below exactly. the world, you want to you wanna have a gritty scene like, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is old and busted and whatnot. There's some. There's an element to that. There's an, exactly. art, there's an art to it. And the 80s movies all kind of had that by default because of the cameras. But I agree. Like, you know, I wouldn't want to see Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the original, the first one, in HD. I wouldn't want to see that because... I like nah. the darkness and the greediness and the way they look and everything. I like that. All of that, yeah. Yeah. No, great movie, Same man. I, I love this, man. I love this movie. The seashell stuff cracks me up. I don't even know how they use it, to be honest. Because I was thinking... So how do you use it, man? I was thinking, do you just... Let's straight... put the question out there to the people. Guys, what do you guys think? Put it in the comments. Let us know. What were the free shows for? But, G-Man, what was your thoughts? Like, what, what, was, what were they using it for? Well, because obviously I'm trying to think because they're supposed to be super hygienic there. They don't even touch, bro. You can't even high five or whatnot in that in that. Oh era, yeah, right? that's right. We're yeah, yeah. About, like even like this, like a COVID thing, bro. Remember that we couldn't even touch each other. But oh, that was wow. like, how crazy is that, right? So you couldn't even touch. So I'm trying to think. They're supposed to be super hygienic. So how do you use the seashells? And they're not personal seashells, meaning that everyone reuses them, right? So I was thinking, like, do you use the seashells to scrape your booty or and, and then wash it? But that's butter because you're still smudging it. The best way is a bidet and you wash your booty. But how how is what was the thought behind a seashell that's the most cleanest way to clean your booty? And to this day, I I, I don't Hold know. Hold up, bro. But there must that's be something like yeah. Hold on. No, that's what I'm checking. You check on YouTube or Google. I'm, I'm going to see I, what chat I'm GTP going, says. I was just about to go to chat GPT. Go on. You tell me what, what, what it says. Yeah. Wait, should I type it in here? No, you know what? Put it up on the screen. Let's see it, bro. Type it yeah, up and put it up on the screen. Let's, let's share the screen. and let's, let's Share the screen it. and do it. This is jokes. All right. I'm going to write in the militia, man. Let me copy and paste this. Yeah. Basic. I can't even see the... Uh... Oh, right. In Demolition Man movie, how are you... Supposed to use the three seashells. Right, let's see what it says. <laughs> let's see what Chat GPT says. The use. The use of the, I can't go. You, you read it. So yeah, I'm trying to move my thing. So the use of the the use of the three seashells in the movie Demolition Man is one of the most enduring mysteries. <laughs> the film <laughs> doesn't explain how the three seashells are used, even <laughs> up to the audience's imagination. Okay. Okay. The movie, uh, in okay. the movie, the protagonist, John, John Spartan, played by Sylvester Slow, finds himself in a future where, okay, let's talk about the movie, where the traditional toilet paper has been replaced by these three seashells in a restroom. By the way, toilet paper still butters, man. Smudging that on you is still not clean. That's butters. Uh, when he asked them how to use it, the other characters laughed with no explanation given. Over the years, the ambing ambiguity has led to various fan theories and jokes about how the seashells might work, ranging from humorous to the bizarre. bizarre. Uh, the film screenwriter Day Daniel Waters has mentioned in interviews that he came up with the idea because he wanted something futuristic, futuristic. and quirky, but he didn't have a specific method in mind on how they would actually be used. In short, the exact method of using the free seashells remains a hum humorous mystery. Hu hu no, man, not humorous, man. Humorous, bro. <laughs> humorous mystery, and that's part of the fun. Okay. <laughs> My reading made that even more hilarious. Um, well, there you go, guys. Nobody knows. Use your imagination. I, I'm sticking to a bidet because that's the best way to clean your booties and the most hygienic way. But that's a fun 
fun thing. We use a bottle, a bottle, man. But the game. Know what Lotta or a bottle is. Get in that game, guys. Get in that games. In the bag, we have carry wet wipes with you. We have the spray, man. It's it's awesome. Spray, man. Spray your body up. Spray the booty. That's it. Demolition Man. Uh, Sandra Bullock was awesome in it. Um, yeah, yes. great, great movie, man. A really, really enjoyable, easy to watch again. I love, I love going back and watching a movie and be like, oh, this is easy to watch. There's no struggle of like, oh man, this is kind of boring or that's cheesy. Nope. Great movie to just put on watch. Prime in shape, Sylvester Stallone. Prime um, uh, Wesley Snipes. Simon says, just a brilliant sort of like villain, like. You know, Simon says die. Simon says that like, come on, man. That's just I think that's kind of I think that's just wicked. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that movie, man. No, so good, man. Definitely a good one. Definitely a good one. Cool, man. That's it, man. That is it for this week's show, man. Uh guys, if you haven't watched Demolition Man, check it out. And uh um, Definitely, man. Simon says. Else? Yeah, anything else, bro, before we finish up. No, that's it. I think oh, well, I'll be burning them next week. For work and then I don't even know if we've got any screeners next week. I need to double check, but it could be for the following week. I need to double check. I didn't realize there's could be some screeners, but I'm in Birmingham, so I need to sort out who can go to them. Uh, no, nah, nothing much, man. Guys, massive thank you as always, man. I'm gonna walk this one out and say, guys, please click the links in our description and in our social media. Uh, you can follow us at on Instagram, uh, TikTok, Threads and twitter formerly known well x formerly known as twitter just type in the brothers geek out podcast it'll always come up uh but donation links are in the bios to help the people of palestine and uh, massive thank you for the love that you guys share with us as well and give us some questions for next week that we can you know what movies what's our favorite movies and stuff like that so uh, or any questions or anything you guys would like us to yeah. cover pop that in instagram again there. like that was pretty cool yeah i'll do that I'll do that again. But uh, yeah. All right, guys. One love, man. All right. We out. Peace. Peace.